I'm heading down to a, a road called Brenner Pass Road. Down here there is a um, Santan Regional State Park. Those in the distance are the Santan Mountains. Well, not that distant. So there is a Santan Regional Park has hiking trails and various other things. I hope he doesn't swing around. Um, very nice, very rustic. But down here you see a lot of the saguaro cactus. They only grow in the Sonoran Desert, which is strange but it, they have to have a certain altitude and a certain temperature. But they're, they're the typical sign of the Southwest. As we get to Brenner, this is Thomas Road. A little bit further down, it changes to Brenner Pass Road. And from there, it is a really windy, interesting road. I did one video a few months ago going down this way. I lost a cup down this way. I hit a bump and the cup flew out and because of the blind curves and everything else I didn't go back and get it. So I lost a cup and it was a nice one. I should have put a bungee cord on this one but I didn't. It's always good when you're heading down into nowhere that you take along some ice water because it could be a long wait to get a, a tow truck. At this stop sign, the road changes names. Okay, if you turn right here, it's the Santan Regional Mountain Regional Park, and it's Tom Thompson Road there, and I don't see a sign that tells you what it is here, but it is Brenner Pass Road. Now we start with the 15 mile an hour curves, and they do mean 15 mile an hour. Oh, there's those nice bumps. Snaky curves. You see a lot of the cactus in the distance now. A whole bunch of them. See where the birds make nests in them and peck holes in them. This is all just natural vegetation. Little wonder we have so many uh, brush fires. All this dry vegetation this time of year. Usually if I'm down this way, I have to pull over and let the speeders go by because I'm here to see the scenery. I'm not going anywhere in particular. So it's just such a unique view. There are people who live back in this direction. A little bit further down, we'll get into quite a few homes.
but these are very blind curves. It is quite the scenic ride though. I really enjoy this. Not so much in a car, but on a motorcycle you get to see all of the scenery around, the various vegetation. Now we're getting into some homes. Cluster mailbox. Lots of people have horses here. Well, that was a nice bump. Brenner Pass. Some very nice homes. I like the Santa Fe style. Off in the distance, there's homes sit in the set on the hillside. The last time I was down here, I didn't have a, a really good camera, so the pictures were kind of blurred, but I'm hoping this turns out better. So far, nobody's behind me. Those are very jagged looking mountains. All these are scenes reminiscent of a lot of the Old West movies. Uh, here comes a good snake curve. Looks like they've come through here and paved, or at least filled in a lot of the potholes. There's something reflecting sunlight there in the distance. All right, here's where I normally turn around and go back. But this time, I think I might just take a trip to the right. 
these are unmarked roads so I'm not sure how far back they go it didn't have a dead end sign now this is a good reason to have a tire repair kit if you get out here it's going to take them a while to get to you to fix your tire Interesting. Whoa, I think I've hit the end of the road. Oh, somebody's building an interesting house. Not very southwest looking. More like the east coast. But nice. I've lived all over the country. Lived on the East Coast, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, Georgia, Central, lived in Houston, Texas, lived in California two times, mostly in the San Francisco Bay Area. Lots to see and do out there. It would be nice to have had a Riker out there. I had my motorcycle when I lived in California. The freeways were just a traffic jams. Couple really close calls out there in the Bay Area. Some crazy person with a mattress and box springs on their vehicle. And they, it flew off, it hit the road, cars hit the box springs, blew out their tires. Cars just swerving all over the road and luckily I managed to weave through the needle. Scared the bejeebers out of me. I'll have to bring my, uh, put out my GPS and see where those other roads go. That one looked like it went off into a, a very narrow road. But this is a very relaxing trip. It was, um... When I got up this morning, it was 85 degrees. I'm not sure what the temperature is right now, but it's going to be a hot one again. Uh, it's not much hotter. It's 80, well, down here it's 88 degrees. Yeah, this is, this is one of my favorite rides. There's another place I want to head to, uh, but I'm going to do, wait till it gets a little bit cooler. And that's, uh, there's this road called Bush Highway, and it runs through several of the state parks. And there's uh, lakes and things up there. That would be an interesting ride, because you can drive very close to the lake on the motorcycle. Not sure where I'm going to hang my pass on this. But I'll figure it out.
I have a lifetime pass to all of the national parks. And a lot of the state parks honor that national pass too. It comes in handy. There are some really, really interesting parks. There's one north of San Francisco called Muir Woods, and it's the giant sequoia trees. It's, it's so peaceful, it's just amazing. And it's such a great ride to get there, going over the mountains and very pretty. I did a lot of sightseeing when I lived in California up into the Sierra Nevadas, down the coast, up the coast. Such neat little towns along the, the coastal highways. And if you're a seafood fan, great place. Up? Well, crap. Uh, well, I guess I'm, if I'm thirsty, I'm going to have to stop somewhere. Damn. I think that's the same place. No, it wasn't. It was on the other side of the road. Uh. had that cup for a long time too. I could probably go back and get it. And do I want to or not? If I go back, I could reach down with, uh, it's probably broken inside. Maybe I need to get the, uh, the cup on the side by my right knee. I see a lot of people doing that. Either that or wear a backpack. I could actually put it in my shad bag. Just wrap it in something and then that way it doesn't bounce around but then you gotta get off and get it and get a drink. With this, I can just flip up my helmet. It's a modular helmet. Well, that didn't work. Ah. But I digress. The scenery here is just amazing. I love it. There's been things just about everywhere I've lived that I've found to be really, really interesting. Very beautiful scenery. West Virginia has some really, really great scenery. So does Virginia. Maryland, I love the Chesapeake Bay. When I lived in Maryland, I had a uh, an ocean-going sailboat and a uh, small day sailor. So I love sailing the Chesapeake Bay. It's like a lot like riding a motorcycle. You're just out and it's just the wind and the scenery and it can be very tranquil or it can be really, really thrilling if you're in a, a lot of heavy wind. My very last sail on my large sailboat we hit a storm on the bay and it was such a bad storm that it capsized a whole uh, sailboat race uh, the storm came up unexpected and it really lasted so I was one of the very few boats out on the bay much less a boat under sail 
but I managed to sail the boat all the way back to the marina without incident and my crew stayed in the cabin eating the last of the food. It had been a week-long sail, so there was still food left in the ice box, and they were down eating while I'm up on the up in the cockpit with the, my rain slicker on and fighting the wind and the rain and the oh, it was such such a thrill.